So next, uh, we have uh, Alex Neufeld with the Coral Restoration Foundation, who is uh, going to be talking about something that has become really popular for our community over the last five years, and that is the emergence of the use of photomosaics and structure for motion as a tool for monitoring both our restored reefs as well as reefs in general. But one of the biggest challenges there has been access to it, um, both, either, both for developed countries and certainly for undeveloped countries. And certainly the technology required to do it and all of those things can be a challenge for certain places. And Alex has been leading the charge uh, with the Coral Restoration Foundation to really try to democratize that access to that information. And so Alex will be talking to you a little bit about that today. All right. Thanks very much for that, Tom. Uh, so like he mentioned, uh, my name is Alex Neufeld. I'm the Photomosaics and Technology Coordinator for Coral Restoration Foundation. And I want to do a couple of things with the talk today. I want to introduce folks to this concept of large area imagery that we, we've already had a fantastic workshop uh, at this conference on Monday on but I figure I'll give a brief overview here to sort of set the stage. And then what I wanna do is talk about this Cerulean AI pipeline that Coral Restoration Foundation has been developing for about a year now. Um, so where this all started was with coral restoration monitoring, obviously. Uh, and for a long time, this was kind of the standard practice for monitoring your coral restoration project. You have a diver, they take underwater paper, pencils down with them, they have a little ruler, they measure their outplants, you generate data. And this works, right? It works really well up to a certain point and only for certain metrics, okay? So what CRF realized is that as we grew year after year in our restoration program, we were spending more time monitoring than we were actually planting coral. And when you're trying to run a restoration program, that, that's antithetical. <laughs> So what we needed was, one, a new way to monitor our outplants, and two, a new way of monitoring outplants that would actually generate metrics that now reflect what the population is doing, rather than simply the individual colony. So we've shifted in our restoration goals, now we need to shift in our monitoring goals, going from individual colonies to the population. And so this is now what we're capable of doing. This is a, a photo mosaic, an ortho mosaic, whatever you want to call it, a large scale image of North Dry Rocks Reef off of Key Largo, Florida here. And in this single image, we encompass a little over 13,000 square meters of seafloor. You can see there's some nice spur and grooves, um, some back reef habitat. And when you zoom in, you still maintain the resolution needed to do population level analyses. These are some of our Elkhorn coral outplants that actually just spawned in mass uh, about a month ago here. It was really phenomenal to see. But this is how we can now assess how our restoration is actually working. Similarly, we can scale this up. If my clicker would work. Oh, too fast. I think this is just a very large image file that it doesn't want to handle. Anyways, we can scale this up, uh, and when the mosaic loads, what you'll see is uh, an area that is now 37,000 square meters in a single uh, image file. This is the Aquarius Reef Base off of Isla Mirada, Florida, if any of you have had the fortune to go and visit. Uh, it's a phenomenal site, but this is actually in pretty deep water. So the habitat itself is right here, it's that little uh, subway car looking thing and it sits in this basin that's about 60 feet deep. And then you have these ridges along the outside that come up to about 40 feet deep, and then this slopes all the way down to 90 feet, 100 feet down here. So it's a massive area, it's super deep. But my point in showing this is that we have the technology now to build areas like this and do massive large scale monitoring with images that maintain a really high resolution. Now similarly, we can also downscale this, so this is a very small area with a handful of little Orbicella outplants that we have, um, and we can build these nice three-dimensional models and we can do little individual colony level analyses if we would like. So that's kind of the intro to large area imaging, um, and I would be remiss if I didn't shout out my other co-hosts from the, the workshop, Art Gleason uh, at University of Miami, Nicole Peterson and Clint Edwards at Scripps, and then also Will Green um, from Perry Institute. 
So now that we kind of have that, let's talk about you know, some of the benefits of this. So the first benefit, obviously, is that you get population level metrics and reef scale analyses. Um, and I'm regretting putting up a lot of large area imagery in my presentation now because <laughs> it doesn't want to load large area imagery. Um, but this is what we can kind of see now. This is a restored uh, spurring groove section of a reef here in the Keys, and all those little white dots are our outplanted corals. So it kind of speaks to the scale of how we're now analyzing the reef. So we've got population level metrics. We can generate really easily surface area coverage, which has sort of become our de facto measurement, measuring stick for how well our corals are doing and how well our restoration is working. And it also comes with a reduction in field work because if we're gonna go and monitor, you know, 5,000, 10,000 colonies, that takes a lot of time if you're just taking paper and pencil and you're writing all of this down. If you're in the water just with a camera swimming back and forth, we can do in 20 minutes what we had to take teams of divers a full day to do. So we're saving money essentially because field work is, is costly and you have to worry about things like the weather and boats breaking and all of that. And we also preserve a photographic record of the benthos through time, right? So the archiving capacity for this is really phenomenal because you can always go back and reanalyze and reassess what was before. Unfortunately, though, there are some drawbacks. Um, the first one is that it requires significant computing power to stitch these large scale images uh, in, any, in any reasonable amount of time, at least. Uh, you also have a rate limiting step now that is shifted from in water to in office. So you still need a, someone to go in, find the corals in a mosaic, and then, you know, annotate the mosaic essentially. So your rate limiting step still kind of exists. I'm not sure why I'm back. Um, your analysis still relies on a human expert, similarly. Okay, so you need someone to sit in front of the computer, identify a coral in the image, mark it as a coral, measure it, all of that. There is also a pretty steep learning curve. Sorry, I don't know why the feedback is happening here. Um, there's also a steep learning curve for this kind of thing. And this is really the core of what I wanna talk about today. So we have this situation where mosaic technology has advanced, the computers are getting faster, they're getting a little bit cheaper, um, and we know how to build these massive images. But it, it took me four years to get to this point. I don't want anybody else to have to spend four years figuring this out, right? I'm not a computer scientist. I don't understand how the stitching software works a whole lot. We need to democratize this process for people so that all you have to do is take your pictures and then you can get your data. And that is where the Cerulean AI pipeline comes in. And so now I'll spend the rest of my time briefly running through what this pipeline is and what its, what its capabilities are gonna be. So, at its core, the pipeline is designed to make the creation, storage, analysis of large coral photo mosaics nearly 100% hands off. So you don't need expertise in photogrammetry, in structure for motion, in computer software. You log in to a website, you upload your imagery, and at the end of the day, you get your mosaic or your data, okay? So, Practically, what this kind of looks like, we have dedicated virtual machines um, in the cloud that run the stitching software with some pre-configured scripts and things like that so that it's just sort of a, a, a plug and play situation. You upload your images, you input some metadata on the site, uh, and then you sort of just press go. You get an email notification when your mosaic is done, and then you can review the mosaic in the interactive panel like you see in this animation here. So you can zoom right in there in your web browser on a laptop, doesn't need any sort of significant computing power, uh, and you can assess kind of right there what your, what your area looks like. In terms of file storage, then you'll have access to the final photo mosaic image, obviously, as well as your original photos, project files, stitch report, Coral statistics once the AI has been completed, and then you have the option to mark your project as either public or private. So there's an element of, of uh, collaboration and sharing here. So other organizations can then sign in, see any areas that you've marked as public, and, and sort of collaborate in that way. Speaking of the AI analysis then, this is the really, really cool part. You can define an area for AI analysis, and right now we've started building some models for the two Caribbean acroporids, Cervicornis and Palmata, and these models will find in your mosaic image 
the staghorn and elkhorn coral, uh, wherever they may be. And then the statistics on those coral, how many there are, maximum diameters, surface area coverage, will all get added to the job details page where the, the actual mosaic file lives. Um, and so this is kind of where we're at right now with the AI prediction. It's not perfect, it's not 100% final, but we do have uh, sort of a refining process that I'll talk about here in a second. This on the left is the ground truth. So this is when one of our analysts goes in, they trace the coral, they paint it white, and then on the right you see what the model predicted for that same area. I believe this was a, a staghorn coral area. Um, so like I said, it's not perfect, but we're getting there, and I think we're getting there pretty quickly. This is that refining portion then. So anytime you build an AI model like this, the more data you can throw at it, the more you can refine and refine and refine, the better it's gonna get, the more accurate it's gonna be. So we have this adjudication portal that's sort of built into the pipeline where you can select parts of your mosaic, you see them here in green squares, and Cerulean will pull out those parts that you've selected, break them down into little chunks, and then you can actually go through and tell the model, okay, yeah, you found the corals, you did a good job, or no, that's actually not coral, we need to remove that from your learning set. And so by doing this, what we've essentially created is not just a pipeline that can stitch mosaics and then analyze mosaics with AI, it's also a pipeline where you can stitch mosaics, analyze them with AI, and then also build new AI models right here in the portal, right? So if you upload a mosaic for a new species, your AI model is not gonna find anything, right? Because it's never seen that coral species before. But you can go through and you can refine over and over and over again. And with each refinement, that new species model gets better and better and better to the point where now you have a new species of coral that the Cerulean Pipeline can find in a mosaic. And we've done a little bit of beta testing, at least on the mosaic stitching part of the pipeline. So uh, my colleague Jessica Levy, she was in the Red Sea uh, at Shusha Island, and they were out there, <laughs> middle of nowhere, no supercomputers, no massive processing cards, anything like that, but they needed to assess you know, potential restoration areas on this island. So we said, okay, well, we'll spin up the VM, send us your, your images or upload them. And what they were able to do was stitch mosaics and have them ready essentially the next day in the field while they're out there doing these assessments. So this kind of analysis is what is now possible when you don't have to go back to the lab, hand over a, an SD card to your, your computer science team and say, hey, let me know when <laughs> in two months when the mosaic is finally done. All right, you can do all of this with just an internet connection. So what's next here? Well, we are ready to open the pipeline for photo mosaic stitching. And we want that to be free and publicly available. All right, now this is a brand new, I had, I had our software development team from New York. Um, shout out to those guys, because I know they're watching on the stream. We had them working round the clock to basically make it possible for me to say that at this conference. So we're ready now <laughs> for, you know, if you have mosaics out there, if you have image data, whatever, like we, within the next, you know, weeks, month, hopefully, we're gonna get you guys on board and, and into this system so that you can at least start getting some of those mosaic files, okay? Also, watch, um, whoops, wrong button. CoralRestoration.org slash Cerulean AI that uh, there's a, a web form on there, put in your emails so that you know exactly when this thing goes live and when we're ready to accept data from your organization, okay? There will also be updates um, about when the AI portions come online and are available for, for external users as well. So definitely keep monitoring all of that. Um, and with that, I think I'm done. Thanks everyone.